today we have fairly complete uh, a knowledge of the uh, resources uh, that are spent by the so-called traditional donors on um, or DAC donors on, on development cooperation. That's, that's the, the ODA, uh, which was presented to you in, in the first session last week. Uh, but the ODA, as, as, as you were explained, uh, the definition dates back from 60 years ago. There is no link with the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, and uh, Today, we don't have a uh, knowledge of what resources are spent by the official sector, the public sector, for the SDGs. There is no measure that can give a comprehensive view of what the official sectors of the various um, countries provide for sustainable development. And that's this, this gap that Tosti uh, is is meant to to fill uh, and we will see in the in the course of the presentation that it, it's actually done a bit more than 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 fill fill a gap and as i said uh, the the eu has very much supported this process which is very much a transparency uh, issue and uh, is co-chairing the international Tosti task force which uh, is, is in charge of devising the, the, the TOSDI framework. And uh, I'll come back to that uh, later. So next slide, please. Uh, what is TOSDI? And you, you see here in this nice infographic that you should pronounce, you should pronounce simply TOSDI. Uh, you, you, you can also go for TOSSD if you want, but that, that sounds a lot more threatening. So, so TOSDI is better. Um, it is a a new statistical measure, meaning uh, the same uh, data quality control and reliability uh, aimed at as, as ODA, uh, real statistics, which is meant to provide a complete picture of all the official resources spent in support of sustainable development and the SDGs, official resources being resources spent by the public sector of the various countries in the world. And added to it is the private finance mobilized by official interventions. Again, I'll come back to that in a bit more detail. And here is the slide which essentially explains the whole Tosti concept uh, and in one go. So what you see on the, on the left is the um, types of reporters for, for TOSTI are first bilateral reporters, by which we mean countries, which are the DAC countries, those which report ODA, but also all the other bilateral providers which currently do not report um, what they're doing, meaning essentially the southern cooperation providers, um, whether whether we are talking of South South cooperation or triangular cooperation, and the second category of reporters, and that's also a, a major novelty in, in TOSD compared to the, to the current um, <clears throat> statistics, is multilateral organisations uh, are reporters in their own right uh, in TOSD. In in ODA, everything is all, all resources are uh, attributed to the donor countries. So what multilateral agencies like, uh, like the UN, but also the EU spends, are attributed to, to their member states. The EU exists in ODA statistics pour mémoire, uh, but there's only the notion of how much the country spends on development. And since and, and there is very little granularity and detail on what uh, multilateral on what the multilateral spends their their budgets. And again, TOSDI fills that gap by uh, ensuring that the multilaterals are, as I said, reporters in their own right. So report all the projects that that they 
implement with, with the same level of detail. Um, so two categories of, of uh, reporters. Then the resources uh, included in TOSTI are ODA. Most of ODA, most, we'll see that next, is TOSTI. You also have what is now called other official flows, which are the um, resources provided by DAC donors, but which do not meet the definition of ODA or the concessionality that is needed for loans to be, to be ODA eligible. So these are essentially loans <coughs> provided by DAC donors, not meeting the, 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 uh, uh, the ODA uh, requirements. You also have South South and Triangular Cooperation, as I said. You also have also a major novelty, I'll come back to it, support to international public goods, uh, and private finance mobilized by, by this official support. So these are all the types of resources that are targeted by, by TOSTI, as you see, a much wider um, uh, scope than, than the, the current existing statistics and including areas which, which are not reported and not known today. Now, uh, as its name implies, TOSTI is the measure to, uh, of resources which support sustainable development. So there is in TOSTI what we call a sustainability test, which is, does the activity promote an SDG without being substantially detrimental to another? That is the definition of the, that sustainability test in the, in the TOSTI reporting instructions. Uh, so if if an, ex an activity passes that test, uh, then it is TOSD eligible. If it doesn't pass the test, it is not TOSD eligible. And that's why I was saying before that most of ODA, but not all, is TOSD eligible. Typically, what we call brown ODA support to fossil fuels, uh, there is still a bit of it, uh, is ODA eligible because uh, the, 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 there is no or not yet, a, a sustainability test in, in ODA, but it's not TOSDI eligible. And then, <clears throat> last part of the slide, once an activity is uh, considered TOSDI eligible, it is um, attributed to one or the other pillar. There are two pillars in TOSDI. The first one is what is called the uh, cross-border resources. And the second is support to international public goods. I'll come back to that in more detail in the next slide. So uh, stop it right now. But if after the presentation, you, you want a summary of TOSTI, it's in that, in that previous slides. Everything important is there. Now, in a bit more detail, uh, the, the, the TOSTI classification, as I said, is in, is in two pillars. Uh, and pillar one is the cross-border cross flows. That is the resources that actually cross the border and land in a developing country. So uh, those resources which are covered in, in pillar one are those which contribute to at least one SDG target uh, and have no substantial detrimental effect on one or other target, that's the sustainability test that I just mentioned. And the recipient of the flow is a country in the list of TOSTI eligible countries. And that list is the DAC list of ODA recipients as, as, as a basis. And then it can also be countries which have opted in to be TOSTI eligible, even though they are not uh, ODA eligible, and there is no such country yet because it's 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 still all very much in the making. So no country has yet activated this opt-in procedure. Um, but but the countries that we're targeting are are um, typically those countries which are graduating uh, to to high income country and then uh, no longer are ODA eligible, uh, but with with which there is still a lot of, of cooperation going on. So pillar one uh, 
flows going to developing countries. Pillar two uh, is is um, conceptually more difficult because it's it's those resources which are spent in support of uh, international public goods wherever they are spent. So we still have that sustainability test. An, ex an activity must uh, promote an SDG target and have no detrimental effect, substantial detrimental effect on another. Uh, and it must either target a TOSD region, a TOSD eligible region or group of countries. Uh, it is also, and mostly, um, including resources spent in the donor countries, in our case, in Europe, provided they have a substantial benefit for the TOSD eligible countries or their population, or they are spent in cooperation with entities in TOSD eligible countries. That is the case, for instance, for, for research. We, we have, we have the, the best case at hand at the moment is the research on vaccines. Uh, typically a research on vaccine that would be led by a consul on vaccine for, for COVID, which has a substantial benefit for TOSD eligible countries because they, they are a part of the population that, that is a victim of COVID and could benefit from the vaccine. Uh, if the vaccine is worked on by a consortium of laboratories, some of which are in Europe, some of which are in uh, toss the eligible countries in Africa or Asia, then, then the, the, um, the research itself is, um, is toss the eligible. If all the research is carried out in Europe, then uh, for, for it to be eligible, you have to show that it does provide substantial benefits for toss the eligible countries. Um, which which will depend on on the on the disease at hand most probably. Next slide, please. Ah, quiz time. So, to make sure that that this first flow of information has uh, has been well understood, we now have three three multiple choice questions, and I will. Uh, uh, clarify at once, there may be more than one correct question, uh, answer for each question. So first question, which of the following are included in TOSD? We have climate mitigation in Europe, climate adaptation in Europe, climate mitigation in developing countries, or climate adaptation in developing countries. So just for everybody, the link has been shared in the chat. So for those who haven't seen that, please have a look. And if you have a problem to access the link, you can always use this code on top of menti.com, 5513093. I see already six feedback, eight now. We have 16 feedback, so 17. We're nearly... Nearly there, so, so let's, let's proceed. Uh, start with the easiest, climate mitigation in developing countries. Uh, for which most of you have said that it is eligible. Indeed, it is, it is included in TOSTI if, if the EU or, or Germany sp spends funds for activities uh, leading to climate mitigation in a TOSTI eligible country, then that activity is included in TOSTI, clearly. 
Same for climate adaptation in developing countries. In both cases, we're under pillar one, you have flows going to a totally eligible country for an activity which supports an SDG, uh, the SDG on, on, on fighting climate change, and hopefully has no substantial detrimental effect on another SDG, so it is totally eligible, pillar one. More difficult are the, the, the first two columns, uh, because we're talking of activities taking place in Europe. So if they're eligible, they would be pillar two because there's no cross-border flow. So what we have is climate mitigation in Europe. Climate mitigation is activities that aim at reduce the um, reduce climate change, to put it simply. Uh, and these have a global effect. If you, if, you, um, if you build windmills or solar panels in the Netherlands, uh, that will, hopefully, it's the purpose, prevents uh, the, uh, the rise of sea level and that prevention of rising of sea level will have effects throughout the world, including in ben Bangladesh or Pacific Islands. So there is a substantial benefit for those the eligible countries and climate mitigation activities in Europe are eligible under Pillar 2. By contrast, climate adaptation activities are activities which uh, aim at limiting the effect of climate change. And uh, typically, if you build dams in the Netherlands to uh, to, to uh, fight the, the the or limit the the uh, the damage caused by rising sea levels, that has a beneficial effect on the Netherlands, but none on Bangladesh. Uh, so, contrary to climate mitigation, climate adaptation is not TOSTI eligible if it takes place in in Europe in a non TOSTI eligible country. Uh, let's move to the next questions where, where the same explanations can also <coughs> be made. So which of the following are included in TOSTI? We have public support to COVID-19 vaccine development in Europe, in developing countries. You have private financing mobilized with public funds for vaccine development. Private financing not mobilized with public funds. And you have the funding of distribution of COVID in developing countries and in Europe. So which of these six are TOSTI eligible? It's a long question, but still. <laughs> Can you see the question just in case? I'm just checking. If you have any trouble, let me know. Or you are thinking, ah, OK. Ah. Oh, we're starting to have answers. Good. We have 18 feedback. Okay, so so 
let's let's proceed with with answers and explanations. First, we have public support to COVID-19 vaccine development in Europe. That is indeed totally eligible under Pillar 2, contribution to a global public good, because the COVID-19 pandemic affects the whole world, including totally eligible countries, and the population of those countries would benefit uh, from, from the vaccines in, in in the way it is, uh, the, the research is, is carried out now with, with this uh, support and, and pledges that the whole world will benefit from the vaccines. So, so there's, there's an argument that this vaccine development, even though carried out in Europe, and there's, is eligible under Pillar 2. Uh, you will understand that this um, the definition of substantial benefit to toss the eligible countries will need to be assessed case by case. Uh, if it were uh, support to vaccine for a disease which is predominantly prevalent in industrialized countries, that would not substantially benefit developing countries and not be toss the eligible. But in the case of COVID-19, we take it it is eligible under Pillar 2. Uh, develop public support to COVID-19 vaccine development in developing countries, that is clearly eligible under Pillar uh, 1. Uh, it, uh, you have resources crossing borders to developing countries for, for, the, for the research to, to, to take place there, uh, and you have uh, support to um, uh, the health uh, SDG. Private financing mobilized with public funds for vaccine development is also totally eligible because you have that category of private amounts mobilized by official support, uh, which, uh, which is eligible. Uh, on the other hand, private financing not mobilized with public funds, i.e. pure private financing for vaccine development is not totally eligible. So uh, amounts provided by the, by the Bill Gates Foundation or Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, sorry, or, or by, by the pharmaceutical laboratories themselves for the research are not eligible for TOSTI. Funding distribution of COVID-19 vaccines in developing countries is TOSTI eligible under Pillar 1, no doubt. Funding distribution of COVID-19 vaccines in Europe that is not TOSTI eligible, you have the, the same um, uh, the same reasoning of, as for climate adaptation apply. You have resources spent in, say, Europe for benefit to the European population because we're talking distribution of vaccines for the European population. So no benefit for TOS the eligible country, not TOS the eligible. Next question. Which of the following are included in TOS D? Support from Germany for a coal power plant in Namibia. Support from Germany for a wind farm in Namibia. Support from China for a coal power plant in Namibia or for a wind farm in Namibia. Support from China for a coal power plant in Germany and support from China for a wind farm in Germany. Which are TOSTI eligible?
looks like there's a trend in the answers. Um, so uh, let's explain. Um, most of you have rightly answered that uh, support for a coal power plant, wherever that power plant is and wherever the funding comes from, is not costly eligible. Uh, it doesn't pass the sustainability test uh, of not uh, substantially of not being substantially detrimental to an SDG uh, because coal ra uh, raises um, CO2 emissions and and so is detrimental to the to the climate change uh, SDG. So coal, um, as I said first, can be ODA eligible, uh, but is not TOSTI eligible. Uh, we still have to devise uh, uh, in, in, in detail uh, that criterion of being substantially detrimental to an SDG, and it, in particular in the, in, the, uh, uh, in, in the SDG field, um, the discussion is very, uh, is very difficult. Uh, you have that notion of transition from, low, uh, from high carbon to low carbon and what is good um, on the transition path, but coal definitely is on the wrong side of the line, uh, not sustainable, so not TOSTI eligible. Support from Germany for a wind farm in Namibia, yes, pillar one, you have resourcing crossing border for a sustainable activity, that is TOSTI eligible pillar one. Support from China for a wind farm in Namibia, eligible in just the same way, just the same reasoning. One is a traditional donor, the other is a southern provider, but for TOSTI, it doesn't make a difference. Support from China for a wind farm in Germany is indeed TOSTI eligible, not under pillar one, because uh, Germany is not a TOSTI eligible country, but yes, under pillar two. Uh, it is a climate mitigation activity in, uh, in Europe, whether it is funded by Germany itself or by China or by whoever, it is TOSDI eligible under pillar two because it has a substantial benefit for TOSDI eligible countries. Uh, somebody cannot hear. Is it? Carmen, can the others hear me? Yes, yes, I can okay. hear. Maybe it's um, internet problems. Or... Okay, um, hopefully it's an isolated problem. <laughs> um, so here you have this, um, uh, with these examples, um, I hope a, a better understanding of the, of the um, TOSTI definition and criteria, cross-border flow or not, sustainable activity or not, substantial benefit to um, TOSDI eligible countries or not. And these are the three, the three axes on which you need to work uh, to determine the, the eligibility of, of an activity. Uh, I'm losing the slides on screen. Okay, good. Shall we move on to the next slide? Yes. So, what are, what are the benefits of TOSTI? The first is it's a unified measure for support of the SDGs. Uh, in, the, in, the in the different categories that, that I mentioned uh, as building blocks of TOSTI, we have, as we now know, a fairly, if not very accurate uh, reporting existing of ODA. We have also a fairly accurate reporting of other official flows. We know next to nothing about South South cooperation. And some Southern providers have started to report and devise methodologies to, to report their activities, uh, but no two countries have the same. So there is no comparability. Uh, private amounts mobilized, uh, just the same. Uh, there, is, uh, there is data existing, but very fragmented and, and difficult to compare. 
So what Tosti brings first is a common framework, a common measurement yardstick, uh, which which allows to, to have an overview and 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 compare. Uh, second, having that um, clearer view of of all the flows for sustainable development allows decision makers to make better informed decisions. Uh, it's, uh, it's very important, we take it for um, governments in developing countries to, uh, to have a clearer view of all the resources coming their way in order to influence and discuss with the various uh, donors where those resources should go and Tosti gives them that that more complete picture. Uh, we have that, that example mentioned here on the slide of Indonesia uh, for which uh, only the data survey that was carried out in 2019, so not a full-fledged reporting, only a data survey of those reporters willing to, to, to provide some data um, revealed an increase of 60% in volume of all the flows going to Indonesia. So, so it does give Indonesia a much better picture of the resources at its disposal for its development policy. Next slide. Uh, that more complete picture is also a way for the providers to uh, report what they do, to better know what they do and what others do so as to, to better uh, coordinate or um, better address funding gaps. Uh, one, one major issue here is, and we've discussed it in the, um, in the previous slides in the questionnaire, climate mitigation. There is currently no measure of climate mitigation activities in the world. The UNFCCC, which is uh, the, the, uh, the, the UN body in charge of, of uh, climate finance, has no way to measure uh, resources for climate mitigation. And, and the task force has had contacts with UNFCCC, which is very happy about the, the creation of TOSTI because it will give them that, that measure of all activities for climate mitigation, which, which do not exist at the moment. Uh, another important issue to mention is, uh, just like ODA, TOSTI is reported by the donors, uh, meaning it is an additional burden for the donors, no doubt, but it's not a burden for the recipient countries. They, they receive the, the, the data, they do not have to, to provide it. And that's, that's also an, an important element in, in the uh, international discussions on, on TOSTI. Um, what's in it for us as, as the EU? Um, well, it, it gives us more transparency. It's mostly that, that it really is something to, to keep in mind Tosti is about bringing more transparency on resources for sustainable development. And as a major donor, the EU, including the member states, has every interest in knowing better what everybody is providing for sustainable development in developing countries, because that is an essential piece of information which allows us to, to better uh, target our own support. Uh, it is also a unique opportunity for us to report on everything we do beyond, uh, beyond ODA. It's particularly important, and Sene will present that in the second part of, the, of this uh, session uh, by presenting the, 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 um, uh, the results of the, of the first TOSTI reporting round uh, for the EU. Um, it, it's a unique opportunity to present the funding for uh, contribution to global public goods for which the, the EU is a major contributor. We carried out that reporting exercise with all uh, sectorial DGs in the Commission and 
and uh, you will see the figures, they are pretty impressive. Uh, and again, they allow comparability. They allow uh, the, 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 having all the data in, in the same framework uh, uh, allows comparability and, and, um, and better measuring. Uh, so again, a large scope for pillar two in, in EU reporting. Next slide. How was TOSTI developed? Uh, the first ID uh, emerged, the, the ID first emerged in the so called Addis Ababa Action Agenda in 2015. So the same year as, as the, as the um, SDGs were adopted, this uh, action agenda uh, was also adopted on the means of implementation of, of the SDGs. And, um, among the various other measures of the Addis Agenda, there is the proposal for creating uh, the measure Total Official Support for Sustainable Development. Um, nothing much happened in the first two years for various reasons. Uh, and things really started in 2017 when the International Tosti Task Force was created and started to work on the TOSTI methodology. It took two years to devise a sufficiently robust methodology so we could start to test it in 2019 with a data survey uh, where 43 reporters, countries and multilateral organizations uh, voluntarily uh, answered the survey and, and checked if, if the reporting instructions were workable. And, and they were, and, and the, the data survey did show very interesting results. In parallel, a number of pilot studies were carried out, again, to test the, the, the methodology uh, in specific countries. And that piloting work fed into the discussions in the task force uh, and, and the methodology. I cannot see the bottom of the of the slide. Um, and uh, you have here the um, composition of, of the task force as of now. Uh, so more than more than 25 members, as you can see, uh, representing the whole world, quite a lot of um, European countries, either members or observers, uh, American, including South American countries, African, a bit less in Asia. Southeast Asia is, is very represented, um, Central and South Asia a lot less so. China is an observer. Uh, I wouldn't say a Tosti fan, but they are part of the um, uh, um, of the move of the task force as as observer. Um, the EU, the, the, the Commission and South Africa co-chair co-chair the task force, uh, which is composed in in parity of statistical experts from the national statistical offices of, of the of the relevant countries and development policy people so that so that the, the measure does um, incorporate the points of views of, of all stakeholders, be they donors or recipients or dual countries, which are both donors and recipients and statisticians and, and development. Uh, the, the latest state of play is a, a first full-fledged reporting took place this year. The results will be available um, very soon, but I will let um, Sene uh, gave more details on that. Sene, please, your go. Thank you, Laurent. Um, well, before, before we continue with the presentation, if there are any questions uh, already at this stage, I haven't seen any come in in the chat yet. Uh, but if you have questions about the, let's say, the general development of TOSD, about the eligibility criteria, please do not hesitate to uh, uh, to interrupt and, uh, and ask those questions. 
Um, so what we'll do in the in the rest of the presentation is basically dig a bit deeper into what Laurent has already explained and talked about. Um, so first we'll focus on uh, the different elements in the development uh, of, of TOSD, uh, starting with the TOSD pilots. Um, then we'll uh, discuss a bit the ongoing reporting exercise. Uh, so the 2020 reporting exercise on 2019 data. As Laurent said, it's still ongoing, uh, but we do already have some preliminary results uh, for the EU, which, uh, which can shed light on some of, the, some of the things that Laurent has already explained. And then finally, we'll uh, do a little demonstration of the online resources of TOSD, which is the tosd.org website and the tosd.online data platform. Um, so again, if you have questions, uh, do not hesitate to, to interrupt. So we'll start with, uh, with the TOSD pilots, which played a major role in the development of TOSD. Uh, they were really to, to try and test the methodology in, ve in very different ways, uh, but also to try and scope um, uh, the usefulness of the TOSD framework for recipient countries, because these in the end are, are the clients uh, of, this, of this new framework. Um, so there, there are different kinds of uh, pilots that were conducted. Uh, the first are country pilots, so really with these recipient countries. So you had the Philippines and Senegal at a very early stage of TOSD development, so in 2018. Uh, then you had, uh, right before the TOSD methodology was adopted in 2019, uh, pilots with Burkina Faso, Costa Rica, and Nigeria. And then finally this year, uh, there was an ad additional pilot uh, in Indonesia. Now, of course, because Pillar 2 is such an important concept in, in TOSDI and such an important part of the TOSDI methodology, uh, the TOSDI task force also decided to do some thematic pilots on important uh, topics within, uh, within Pillar 2. Uh, there was already a pilot on peace and security, so SDG 16, basically. Uh, and currently, the, the TOSD Task Force Secretariat is working on a thematic pilot on health. Uh, so basically everything related to vaccine development, but also those expenditures in developing countries to increase preparedness and resilience. Uh, that will be a part of, uh, of uh, this upcoming uh, thematic pilot, which should be finished uh, early next year. And then finally, as alluded to by Laurent already a couple of times, in 2019, there was a data survey to really test in, uh, in let's say, real life conditions, uh, the TOSDI methodology, uh, and it was on 2017 data. So basically, members were invited to voluntarily participate, uh, also some multilateral organizations, to really get, get a sense of, uh, of the feasibility uh, of TOSDI reporting. Uh, and so we'll talk about that as well. So starting with uh, the country pilots, what I will do is uh, highlight several elements from the different pilots. Um, of course, we have these elements for all of the different pilots, and I will show you also where to find this information. But it's just to get a sense of what these, uh, what these pilots were all about. So first of all, starting with, uh, with Indonesia, um, what, the, what the TOSDI country pilots found is that TOSDI really has the potential to provide more transparency on on a host of, uh, of different activities. So on activities that were previously not included in international statistics. Um, so what you see there, the total number for Indonesia is basically uh, coming from the data survey. And as Laurent said, that's about 60% more uh, than the existing statistics uh, for, for Indonesia in terms of development finance uh, at that time. So, Within the, that 60% extra, what we find is that there are a, a whole host of uh, different activities uh, which, are, which are additional. Um, you can see some examples here, such as uh, Australia reporting uh, additional activities in the field of migration management. You have Canada, another bilateral donor, which is already reporting to the OECD uh, DAC, but not on, on, on these activities or not on all of these activities. Uh, reporting on regional counterterrorism uh, activities together with Interpol. Then you have UNDP, which is an example of a, of a multilateral organization, which is not yet reporting directly to the OECD DAC. So that's a, that's a major feature of the TOSD framework is that these organizations can now report directly uh, their activities. And so they, in the case of Indonesia, provided more transparency on a biodiversity conservation project. And then finally, CESRIC, which is a Turkish uh, organization on statistics for uh, Islamic cooperation. They provided, um, they provided data uh, on the work that they do with Indonesia on providing statistics in, in, different, uh, in different areas. 
So that's it. So first feature of the of the TOSI framework is really providing this additional transparency on, on new and additional activities. Then another key feature of TOSI, which Laurent already mentioned quite a couple of times, is uh, its focus on sustainability um, and its uh, specific focus on the SDGs. So when countries or organizations are reporting on TOSDI, they have to link every activity that they report to a specific SDG, to at least one SDG. And so this allows uh, receiving countries to really paint a picture of where uh, the different sources of support for the SDGs are landing. So they can really divide all of the TOSDI support that they are getting by SDG. So this is an example, again, with data coming from the data survey for Nigeria, where we see that uh, SDG 1, so the, the no poverty SDG, is uh, receiving the most support in the case of Nigeria. Then you have SDG 8, so decent work and economic growth is second. Uh, and uh, then you have health and, and well-being third with, with 18%. So it's really this, this picture that can allow uh, Nigeria to really see where the gaps in, in, in support for the SDGs in their country in, uh, in Nigeria are, and then try to address those gaps in working with international partners or in trying to address those gaps domestically. So it's a, it's a huge benefit for a country like Nigeria uh, to, have this, uh, to have this picture. What the TOSDI pilots also try to do is, um, is assess together with government officials in receiving countries, in recipient countries, what, the, what precisely are the benefits of a framework like TOSDI for, uh, for their country. So focusing on the case of Burkina Faso, what uh, government officials uh, told the, the TOSDI task force is that it provides, first of all, a more complete picture of uh, resources flowing into Burkina Faso. And it also provides uh, additional transparency, which they need for their own reporting, uh, for their own uh, accountability purposes. So a more complete picture because it provides more data on South-South cooperation, on private amounts mobilized, all of those elements that are currently not included in international statistics. Um, and more transparency because it, it provides granular data and it provides for those, those categories where, uh, where uh, there was no uh, transparency before, um, really these, uh, these, this detailed information which then the government can use. So in the case of Burkina Faso specifically, they have an aid management platform and TOSDI would allow them to fill in the gaps in that um, uh, aid management platform and to basically improve the report uh, that they are preparing each year. Of course, uh, we don't only look at the receiving perspective or at the recipient perspective, TOSDI ha also has a provider perspective. So uh, a lot of the countries which are currently not providing uh, their data to, to international bodies do have an opportunity to do that with, with TOSDI. So the, take, for example, uh, the case of Costa Rica, which has a dual role. It's both a recipient of development finance, but also a provider of development finance. Before, Costa Rica really did ha not have an opportunity uh, to show what it's doing in support of the SDGs. And TOSDI is a clear opportunity for uh, that country to do so. And of course, Costa Rica having, uh, having a big focus on uh, everything related to sustainability and in particular uh, to, to climate change uh, and climate change mitigation, uh, their development cooperation policies and projects really focus also on that, on that domain. So what they reported in the TOSDI data survey uh, are activities uh, related to, to climate change or to biodiversity conservation. You see a, an example of a project in Peru uh, where Costa Rica is working uh, to, to promote energy efficiency for tourist service providers and a case in the Dominican Republic where it's working uh, towards the conservation of coral reefs. So it's clear that TOSDI is also for these Southern providers an opportunity to really show what they're doing in support of the 2030 agenda. Uh, another another example of the of the provider perspective or what what TOSDI can bring to uh, southern providers is is Gabon. Uh, I cannot show you now because that would uh, that would probably not survive my internet connection. Uh, but if you click on this link or go to this link, uh, and I will also show you where uh, to find it on the TOSDI website in a minute, 
uh, you will be able to see the Gabonese representative in the TOSD task force talk about the usefulness of the TOSD framework uh, for his country. He's basically talking about um, African countries now really having an opportunity to show what they're doing in support of peace and security on the continent, uh, but also for the specific case of Gabon, because it's loca located in the Congo Basin. Uh, he's talking about uh, the support that, that they're uh, giving to, to the preservation of the rainforest in, uh, in, in the region. So again, even, even a country like uh, Gabon, which is clearly also a recipient of development finance, uh, even they are very keen to show what they are uh, doing themselves as support uh, for global public goods uh, and for sustainable development. So then moving from those country examples to uh, a more thematic example uh, on peace and security. Uh, so peace and security is, is uh, SDG 16 uh, and, and TOSDI is really providing again uh, added additional transparency on a, on a whole host of different activities in, in that domain. So first of all, in, in terms of peace operations, TOSDI is providing transparency where existing statistics are not. Um, for example, in the in UN peacekeeping operations, the MINUSMA mission in Mali, uh, that is an activity that is currently not cap captured in international statistics, but it is in TOSDI. Um, you, of course, have all of these organizations which currently do not report uh, to any international body, but can report to, to TOSDI. Uh, examples include the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, again, in the the peace operations uh, domain. Uh, then in law enforcement, you have Interpol, again, which, which participated in the TOSDI data survey and for the first time was able to show uh, and provide more transparency on what they are doing, for example, to fight against uh, cybercrime. Um, the Secretary General's, uh, the UN Secretary General's office was also able to report on fight against terrorism, what they were doing there. And then finally, as an example of uh, support to a global public goods, you have international tribunals. So really this, um, well, international tribunals contribute to international human rights and so are reportable under TOSDI Pillar 2. And here uh, you have the example of the independent investigative mechanism for Myanmar. So one example of such uh, international tribunals. So you see that uh, with all of these different activities, they're basically pieces of a puzzle and uh, TOSDI allows uh, to provide more transparency on those pieces so that the, let's say, the bigger picture becomes, becomes a lot clearer. Then finally, uh, on, the, on the data survey, so Laurent has already uh, alluded to it several times, uh, it, it included data from some uh, 43 reporters, both multilateral organizations uh, and bilateral providers, um, of course, but it, was, but it was still a test. So it was not uh, with, with uh, the full spectrum of providers. So the numbers shown here are uh, for sure underestimations of what, uh, what the upcoming real uh, TOSDI reporting exercise uh, will show. So basically with this very limited uh, exercise, what, uh, what TOSDI could bring together was about 300 billion uh, in resources. Uh, just to give a sense of perspective, uh, for the same year, so 2017, when the data survey was done, uh, ODA was about half of that, so about 150 billion uh, US dollars. So TOSDI is with, it, with a very limited exercise already providing transparency on double uh, the amount of ODA. Uh, that was divided at the time uh, because it was very much focused on pillar one and not yet very not yet uh, on pillar two. But as we will see in a minute, pillar two is actually the real game changer in TOSDI. So at the time, the, the division was 215 billion uh, for TOSDI pillar one and about 80 billion for TOSDI pillar two. Um, and an additional 40 billion in private amounts mobilized, which are presented separately here. But leaving aside these very preliminary uh, figures, the great success of the, of, the, of the data survey was actually that uh, TOSDI was able to provide additional transparency on uh, activities and resources. So some 9,000 activities um, found their way into the TOSDI data survey, uh, which were not pr uh, reported previously uh, to the OECD DAC. So you have basically a, a 
a portfolio of 9,000 activities uh, for which uh, we now have uh, more transparency at activity level. So these were divided between 4,000 activities for existing reporters, so reporters already reporting to the OECD DAC, and 5,000 activities by, um, by additional reporters, so reporters who didn't previously report to the OECD DAC. This includes uh, most notably multilateral institutions like UNDP, uh, an example that we've already used, uh, but also South-South providers. So in the TOSD data survey, you had Costa Rica, uh, Brazil uh, participating. Uh, and so these, uh, these 5,000 activities also come, come from them. Um, these activities represent about 20 billion uh, and 13 billion respectively, uh, both for the existing reporters and the additional reporters. So that is really the great success of TOSDI and of this data survey is that it provides additional transparency. So it's an exercise worth doing. And the data survey also showed uh, that it's actually feasible uh, to do um, to do TOSD reporting at uh, at limited additional burden for uh, for the reporters. So that was also an important element going into uh, the reporting exercise of this year. Um, so this year, the uh, official data collection for TOSD uh, was launched. Um, you can see the the deadlines here. So it's 2020 reporting on 2019 data it's always uh, one year one year uh, back same with uh, official development assistance uh, the deadline for pillar one was 31st of july uh, deadline for pillar two was the first of october but uh, given given the various delays the and and of course uh, the covid uh, covid 19 uh, pandemic uh, this uh, data collection is still ongoing and the TOSDI task force secretariat is finalizing the data collection uh, by the end of the year. So we cannot actually show you the results of this uh, TOSDI reporting exercise yet. That will be for end of January, beginning of February. Uh, but what we can do is already focus a bit on the EU contribution to the TOSDI reporting of this year, uh, because that is already finalized. So what we what we see here, these are all 2019 figures, uh, is the the EU institutions reporting uh, to to the uh, to the TOSDI task force secretariat. So what what you see, and let's let's focus on the disbursements because that that's the most intuitive. So the payments, uh, you see that in total. So adding up the European Commission and the European Investment Bank. Um, the European institutions were, in, were able to report about 49 billion euros of uh, TOSDI resources. So this was divided um, between the European Commission with 25 billion in total and the European Investment Bank uh, with, with, about, with about 24 billion uh, uh, yeah, with about, yeah, with about 24 billion extra. So uh, just to give you a sense of, of, of what, this, what this entails, so for the European Commission, so the top uh, table that you can see there, 37% uh, uh, was in pillar one, so cross-border flows, and about 63% was in pillar two, so either support to global public goods or regional transactions. And we see actually that the global public goods part of pillar two is much more important than the regional transactions. About 73% uh, is in global public goods, whereas regional transaction, uh, transactions account for only 27% of pillar two. So it, it's clear that on the whole of the, the EU reporting uh, on TOSDI, uh, that the global public goods really are the game changer here. They account for uh, 73% uh, of the whole of pillar two and pillar two in turn uh, accounts for, for the majority of, uh, of what is reported under, uh, under TOSDI. For the European Investment Bank, it's a bit the same picture. So you see 3.4 billion under pillar one, but more than 15.5 uh, billion under pillar two, and then an additional 4.5 uh, in private amounts mobilized. So clearly for the EU as a, as a provider, um, pillar two is really, really the game changer and what makes, what makes uh, TOSDI such an appealing, uh, such an appealing framework. So it's worth focusing a bit, a bit more on that, on pillar two. 
um, and discuss uh, where these these resources for Pillar 2 are, are really coming from and how they are distributed. So this shows you the distribution by SDG uh, for all European Commission uh, the TOSDI figures uh, in Pillar 2. And what you see is that most of them are in SDG 9, so in industry, innovation, uh, and infrastructure, well, uh, the, the biggest part at least. And the reason is, is that, uh, of course, the EU is a big contributor to research and innovation as a global public good. So what you will see is that everything related to research innovation and the, and the, uh, and the SDGs that belong to it, that they will score uh, quite high. Of course, no poverty, SDG 1 is, is also an important one. Uh, uh, same with SDG 8, which can again uh, be linked to, to, to this uh, research and innovation. So with programs like Horizon 2020 and others, the EU is really a big contributor to uh, research and innovation as a global public good. When we look at it from a sectoral perspective, uh, again, the same picture emerges. You have research and scientific institutions, uh, which are the biggest, again, because of this focus on, uh, on research and innovation. Telecommunications also score high. Uh, administrative costs, which are a, a part of TOSDI, about 5% uh, for the EU. Migration, also uh, important. Education, uh, fishing, etc. And then finally, when we look at it uh, from a support to global public goods uh, perspective, you clearly see that, that the, the front runner in this respect is research and innovation. Again, because of this important role that the EU plays in this area. So that's it for TOSDI development and, and, the, and the background on, on the EU figures for this year. Any questions that I may have missed or anything uh, that you're thinking of now? Uh, because what we'll do in the rest of the presentation is quickly go over the online resources uh, for TOSDI. So, if you have questions about TOSDI's development, uh, reporting instructions, uh, or or um, or about the pilots, uh, do not hesitate to to come in now. Let me see if I can. Um, can can I make a question? Of course. Uh, actually, I have two questions because uh, uh, you compare the you mainly compare the TOSDI to uh, OECD DAC. But uh, I was wondering a uh, comparison against IAT because in IAT also I think uh, a lot of uh, Pillar 2 uh, projects uh, that can go into uh, Pillar 2 of TOSI can also go, that can also be, re be reported in, uh, in IAT. Yeah. So I was wondering, uh, apart obviously uh, from the visual aspect of TOSI, which can uh, easily show uh, per SDG uh, what are the the, the contribution, but uh, against IIT, what are the, the big difference? Yeah. And uh, also, I was wondering, uh, once, um, once the methodology is, uh, uh, is better developed, uh, does the TOSI Secretariat uh, only collect data, or do they also have, uh, uh, verify it, like uh, the Secretariat of uh, OECD DAC? Mm. And, uh, how, do, how does uh, impact the time frame of publication, for example, because uh, OECD DAC uh, published two years uh, after the collection of the data. And I was wondering what was uh, the objective of uh, TOSI publication. Thank yeah. you. Uh, that's, uh, those are two very good questions, which I will try to answer um, uh, at the same time, because the, the answers to those questions are related, I think. Um, so what TOSDI is trying to do is to combine the best of uh, both OECD reporting uh, and uh, the IATI framework. Um, so it wants to combine the rigor and the verifiability that is inherent to reporting to the OECD DAC with the transparency that you can find in IATI. So the big difference I would say between the TOSDI framework and, uh, and the IATI is that uh, TOSDI is a statistical standard. Uh, with dedicated reporting rules, uh, which are governed by, by a recognized international agency, the OECD. Um, uh, whereas IATI is, of course, all, all about transparency and all about having the information out in the open uh, as fast as possible. So what TOSDI is trying to do is find some middle ground there 
uh, and uh, not only um, have a statistical standard, have this verifiability by the TOSDI task force secretariat, but also be a bit quicker in bringing out the results. So what, you, what we hope to uh, establish with TOSDI is that instead of having really two years uh, after, after the expenses took place, uh, that you only then have the, that, uh, the, the data online, that for TOSDI, this would be only one year afterwards. So in the, if I go back to the, to the slide of reporting uh, for this year, so this is reporting on 2019 figures for which the deadline for pillar one is uh, end of July and the deadline for pillar two is beginning of October. Now the TOSD task force secretariat is report is uh, finalizing its uh, its reporting and its uh, its analysis. So the data should be available uh, and fully online by uh, let's say the beginning of next year. Uh, and of course this is the first time th so there are or there may be a couple of delays but that would mean that it's at least one year faster than uh, the OECD DAC in reporting on ODA. So that is uh, that is something that we hope will also be an additional feature of the of the TOSD reporting. I hope that answers your question uh, more or less. Do not yes, thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, so if there are no other questions, and of course, I mean, because we have a, a couple of member states uh, among us, we would also be keen to hear um, uh, if they've participated in uh, in the TOSD reporting uh, and what their experiences were. I think uh, in terms of uh, experience sharing, uh, that would also be uh, be very helpful for us um, and uh, may may also well show show a different experience than the one that we've had. Uh, because I, I forgot to mention, but Laurent alluded to it a bit, is that to get this pillar two data, we of course had to coordinate quite a bit with our uh, so-called line DGs, so line directorate generals. These are the line ministries um, uh, in, in, in member states, where of course a lot of this information um, uh, lies. So it, it was a big coordination exercise, uh, but it led to it led to a very satisfying result in that there is now a, a complete or a more complete picture of what the, the European Commission is doing in support of the SDGs. Um, so if, if member states uh, or people in the, in the call have any, uh, any experience with that as well, uh, we would be more than happy to, to hear it, of course. And I think it would be interesting for everyone. Um, so, so do share, but before, uh, before doing that, let me quickly go to the to the TOSD online resources. So I have to share a different screen. Here we are. Can everyone see the TOSD website? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so this is the TOSD website. As you can see, it's still hosted on the on the OECD uh, web space. This will change uh, early next year, hopefully, uh, when TOSD will have a standalone uh, standalone web page. And so on this website, you can basically find all of the information that Laurent and I have been talking about uh, and more. Uh, so you have here a page on the International TOSD Task Force, uh, which uh, contains all of the details of the different meetings that the task force has been having uh, basically since its inception. So all the way back to 2017. Um, so these are the presentations, the agenda, uh, the minutes of the meeting, you also have the terms of reference of the uh, task force. You have the members list. You have the methodology here. So the detailed description um, of, uh, of uh, how to report on TOSD. You have code lists, data forms. And if you still have questions, you can always reach the TOSD task force secretariat through this uh, email address, which I will also put on the, on the slides. Then, um, we talked a bit about uh, the TOSD pilot studies. So these you can find here. Um, so again, per uh, pilot study that has been conducted, you have the full working paper, which are quite uh, long and dense documents. But for each of the more recent uh, country studies, we have uh, developed uh, these country briefs, which are basically the visual elements that, we, that we've now been using in the slides as well. And these contain uh, all of the information uh, on these different uh, different country 
pilots in a in a in a more presentable format. So this is what we talked about when we discussed Burkina Faso, the the, the benefits of TOSD for uh, recipients. So this is included here, and you have the same for the other uh, other countries. And here you also have it for the peace and security pilot. Going back to the main page. So what else you can find on the main page? Uh, again, key findings from the TOSDI data survey, which is a nice infographic. You, know, you can also find the links to the videos that I talked about. So this is the Gabon perspective on TOSDI. You can have the link here. Uh, I think it was also posted in the chat. Uh, and then there's an additional video on the, the long-term strategic vision of TOSDI, uh, which you can also find the link to here. And then finally, here on the page itself, you will find a video uh, briefly explaining TOSDI in about three minutes um, done by members of the task force. So that's also a very useful uh, resource to have if you want to explain uh, TOSDI to, to other people. So that's it for the websites. So there is also a TOSDI data uh, platform. So this you can find here uh, or by going to tosdi.online directly. And what you then uh, get is basically a full overview of uh, the results uh, in TOSDI so far. So because the 2020 reporting exercise has not finished, uh, everything that is included on the, on the data visualization tool uh, is basically the data survey. So these are mostly, as you will see here, um, well, you have the different years, but it's mostly 2017 flows. So what you can see in this data visualization tool is basically TOSDI uh, in different ways. So the first is the, the distribution by pillar, and these are the figures uh, that we discussed briefly when, when talking about the data survey. So you have 20, 215 billion in pillar one, you have about uh, 40 billion in private amounts mobilized and uh, more than 80 billion in, in pillar two. So those are uh, those fig figures. You can also look at it by sector. So you, here you see that, uh, so these are the DAC sector codes. So the same sector codes as used uh, in official development assistance which uh, Stefano discussed last week. Uh, here you see that energy is the, is the biggest uh, part of TOSDI. Uh, you also have banking and financial service. Unallocated is, is of course also still, uh, still quite high. You have humanitarian aid, uh, et cetera. You cannot only look at it uh, using the DAC sector codes. You can also use the ISIC classification, which is internationally more widely used. Uh, than the DAC sector code. So this is useful, for example, for Southern providers who may uh, or may not be uh, familiar with the DAC sector code. So they can also look at it uh, using this different classification. You can also look at it by recipient. And here you see uh, that the unspecified category is the biggest. And this is of course due to uh, pillar two, uh, which, uh, which almost coincides with this category because pillar two by definition does not have um, does not have a, a recipient country which can be identified. So for that reason, it is, it is put in the unspecified uh, receiving category. You can also look at it on the map. Which takes a while, but it's still a lot faster, I can tell you, than the OECD uh, DAC uh, website. Uh, I'm not sure if you uh, have had some experience with it last week when Stefano was presenting official development assistance, but that is a really slow website. This is already a lot, lot better. Uh, so you have here the biggest category, the developing countries, the unspecified category. Uh, and then you see for each country, uh, the total. So for example, for Turkey, which is a big recipient of, uh, of TOSD flows, you see the total, which is 10 billion, uh, and also the distribution by uh, by pillar. So pillar one is, uh, is uh, 11 billion, sorry, and private amounts mobilized for Turkey is about 3.1 billion. And then finally, uh, what I already showed you using the example of Nigeria, you can also look at it by SDG. So if we take uh, the example of Nigeria, what you can do here at the top is basically introduce a selection. So uh, for now, we, we look at both pillars. So pillar one well, we want to look at Nigeria, so we exclu exclusively want to focus on pillar one because it, we want to look at cross-border flows. We select here 
Nigeria. First, unselect all. And then we find Nigeria in the list. We keep all sectors, but you can also make a selection by, by sector. And we keep all SDGs because we precisely want to see uh, the division by SDG. And in terms of years, we will only focus on the year of the data survey, which is 2017. So if you do all that, and then we apply the selection, we should get a very similar picture to what we showed you on the slides. Uh, basically the division um, by SDG for TOSD flows going to Nigeria. And here we have it. So indeed, this is the this is the picture that we got. So for goal one, we had 23%, uh, which was the biggest. So the no poverty SDG for SDG eight. So the decent work uh, and economic growth, you have 19%. And for health and well-being, the uh, SDG three, you have about 18%. So you can clearly see here the the distribution by SDG, and you can do so for uh, all countries for a group of countries, um, uh, for pillar two resources, just by applying the different selection criteria. So, but perhaps the most interesting part about the, the online uh, data tool is that for each country, for each selection that you make, you can also browse and export activities. So you can, you can really go down to the activity level much in the same way as, as IATI does. Again, finding this middle ground between the, uh, between the, different, uh, the different standards already out there. So if you click on that, uh, you get a list here, but this is not very useful because it only shows you about 10 results uh, on one page. So it's better to export the results uh, to an Excel file, for example, then it will download it. And if I then open it, I may have to It's opening. Can you see it? No, I don't think so. I have to change my... Now we see a black screen. Yeah. Now you see it. Yes. The Excel the file. Excel. Okay. So these are all the flows uh, from the TOSDI data survey going to Nigeria. Now, a, pre a peculiar thing about the data survey is that not all providers uh, agreed to, to show, let's say the real uh, level of detail of the, uh, of the projects that they reported. This is of course something that will not be the case for the actual TOSDI reporting. Uh, so that is why you, here you have uh, aggregates, which is basically saying, uh, look, it's included in TOSDI, but we don't want to show the detail just yet. Um, of course, this is not true for all of the um, all of the activities that were reported. Many countries and organizations did actually agree to make that information public. You have, for example, the UN agencies here, uh, OCHA, uh, the Multi Partner Trust Fund Office of the UN. So here you have the full detail of these uh, these organizations. And let me quickly. Up, uh, freeze the top row so that we can. Voila. So again, scrolling down. So you see here the the UN agencies. So you have a, a lot of detailed information about these uh, projects. So you have the 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 provider uh, and the the agency. So the provider country in this case is the is the, the UN, um, you have the TOSDI ID number, the number of the recipients, so that's the Nigeria's number, the re region, you have the project title, which al already tells you a bit about what, uh, what, the what, uh, what the project is about, but not much. Then you have a description, which already gives you a bit more information. Uh, you could have an external link, really taking you to the, to the project page uh, of that project, which is not in included here. You have the SDG focus, again, which is a key feature of TOSD, so it should be included for every activity. You have the sector category. Uh, so this is all the sectors. You have the ISIC uh, category, that's this different sectoral classification. 
you have the channel, so all very similar to the to the ODA uh, reporting. You have the modality, uh, financial institution, and here you have the the amount. So this is uh, uh, forty thousand US dollars. And if we then take an example of a project by the European institutions, just scrolling down, you see Sweden uh, has made all of this information public. You have Denmark making the information public, same with France, uh, Spain, and then you have even Saudi Arabia, uh, which is which has one project reported uh, to TOSDI uh, for Nigeria, and then you have the EU institutions. So again, here a big uh, a big part or a big effort was done um, by our reporting services to participate in this data survey. As you can see, uh, a lot of the projects uh, in the data survey were from the EU institutions. So again, taking, a, taking an example here. Uh, so it's the European institutions reported by the European Development Fund, so the EDF. Um, title is Promoting Women's Engagement in Peace and Security in Northern Nigeria. And a bit more explanation here. It's uh, linked to goals 15, so the gender equality SDG and goal 16. So peace and security. So it's possible to report on multiple SDGs per uh, per TOSDI activity, but there should at least be one. The sector is uh, government and civil society. Uh, you also have the ISIC uh, name, which is public administration. The channel is through the United Nations. So the, it's implemented by a United Nations agency. Um, it's a standard grant. It's under pillar one. Another important element, of course, of uh, TOSDI reporting, and the amount is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is in thousands of, yeah, thousands. So this is about uh, four thousand, uh, three thousand. Um, uh, it's about three million, three three point three million. So this is. Uh, this should give you a, a sense of what uh, what TOSDI reporting entails and the type of transparency it can provide. Of course, this was still a test. Uh, so with, with the official reporting, there will be more details given. So I see we're almost running out of time. So let me quickly go back to the slides. Uh, here we go. Can everyone see the slides again? Yes. Okay, thank you. So we showed you basically where to find all of the information. Uh, I do uh, encourage you to, to explore a bit, uh, both the website and the data platform. Of course, as the results become available of the TOSDI reporting exercise in January or February, uh, you will find a lot more details, um, details on the data platform as well. So that's it uh, for me uh, and uh, for uh, Laurent. Um, so like I said, do explore uh, the online resources at your disposal. Um, if you would like to become involved and if your country organization is not yet a member or an observer in the TOSDI task force, uh, you're more than welcome to join. Uh, the TOSDI task force is still refining the methodology, is still uh, working um, towards making TOSDI a, a success. So you're more than welcome to join uh, that movement. Um, if your country or organization has not yet provided the TOSDI data, you can. there is still a, a margin of opportunity to do it now, uh, but you have to be quick, uh, or if not, uh, of course, uh, next year. If you have questions, do not hesitate to reach out to the TOSDI Task Force Secretariat at the email address you see there, or uh, just uh, send me a quick email or, or to Laurent, and we would be more than, than happy to help you.